Hi guys, welcome back to Scrap in Scotland. Whether you've intentionally selected the channel, clicked on one of my videos, or if you've just stumbled here by chance, you're all very welcome. So thank you for joining. Today I'm going to do a little video on relay switches. Uh, relay switches can be found very commonly on certain circuit boards. And the purpose they serve is that essentially you can link up a couple of different devices to a relay switch and control the current that goes to these different devices. Uh, as an example, if you have, say, a thermostat that turns on a fan when it gets to a certain temperature, the relay switch acts as the go-between. Uh, and the thermostat, when it reaches that certain temperature, the relay switch then kicks in and turns on the fan. So... I do have quite a few examples of relay switches on my table and I will show you what they are. Uh, but essentially I just wanted to cover off the components and what we're looking to get out of actually scrapping relay switches. So the key thing as with anything, scrapping, uh, is that we are trying to recover the best materials that we possibly can. And for scrappers, the most abundant precious material that we can uh, recover is usually copper because it's more abundant, it's not gold, it's not silver, these things are far more rare but copper is quite common and there is many areas that you can recover copper from uh, obviously from plumbing, uh, from circuitry uh, various different items that you can use uh, electric motors, things like that but really switches is a very small component well most of them are quite small you do get larger ones and i'll actually show you some differences in the relay switches that i have uh, but they are a good source of copper it's very fine copper more like kind of fine hair uh, the copper that you you get out of them but it's not only copper that you can get from relay switches you can also get brass and you also get silver so there is silver contacts so i'll give you an idea kind of what a relay, switch, a relay switch is, how it works, uh, and the purpose of it. So the one I have here is one of the larger ones that I have. In fact, it's probably the largest one I've got on my table at the moment. And what happens here is that you have, again, certain components. So you can see on top here, I'm actually not sure if this top piece is... Uh, brass or copper it looks copper but it may just be that kind of red brass uh, and as you can see here this side we've got some silver contacts yeah so once i press it down you can see the silver contacts release they open and they close yeah now this is slightly different from how other some of our re relay switches work. Uh, it really depends on the polarity and again what you're trying to control with it. You can have more than one thing controlled from the single relay switch. The key thing here is the component. So we have the spring that is attached to the armature. The armature is what is moving up and down here. Okay that contacts directly to the copper coil, which you see here. And this copper coil, once current is ran through it, it creates an electromagnetic field, okay? Once the current runs through that, as I say, it attracts the armature to the coil, pulls it down and makes that connection. Okay, so use it as a silver contact under this piece here, that contacts onto the silver coil, onto the copper coil, and creates that current. Okay. And as I say, you can have different things that generate that, or can actually make that contact work. Be it a thermostat that once it hits that certain temperature, that then clicks in, and it signals to the fan to turn on and cool down whatever 
it is, it's trying to cool down. Okay, so that's what it is, that's what kind of the, the relay switch does. As I say, for us in terms of scrapping, the key things are the components and what we can get out of it. So as I say, we have the copper, and this is a fairly nice copper coil on this one. These pieces on this side, they are just steel. There's no brass here, it's just steel, steel spring, and the structure itself uh, around the edge is all steel. Normally the pieces that hold the silver contacts are brass, and I'll show you that again on some other ones I have. And then you have the brass prongs on the top, okay, that then connects to the other devices. Okay. So as I say, that's that's one of the larger ones. This is what it looks like before it's been uncased. And these things are really easy to get off, you know, you don't have to smash them with a hammer or whatever, you can stick a little screwdriver in one side and pop that lid off nice and easy, okay? So it's not a lot of work to get them off. We do have smaller relay switches, like these ones. These ones you'll find very commonly on circuit boards. Uh, and again, they work to exactly the same principle. You can just nip this top piece off. I just use a pair of snips. So if you see the snips here, your little cutters, I just cut in the corner. Maybe cut in the right corner. Okay, cut in the corner like that. And then you can just start removing the plastic casing. Okay, and it will come off fairly easily, okay? Here's one I already have taken off. That's say reflect this type of switch. And again, you can see it has the copper coil, but it also has the piece of brass that contains the silver contacts, okay? And if you see here, when we push down, okay, and the armature connects with the copper coil, it does create the circuit, okay, by linking those two silver contacts together. So the key thing as well, as I say, we are looking to recover the brass, we are looking to recover the silver contact, and we are looking to recover the copper coil. Again, I'll show you some other ones that we have here. As you can see, a little kind of blue square box one. And popping off the plastic cover, it looks like this. Okay, so again, a nice little coil of copper, nice little piece of brass, and on top, if I can focus that, we have the silver contacts. Okay, that's the blue ones. You get little thin ones, like these. These ones are white. And that's what it looks like once we take the top cover off. Again, exactly the same principle, you have the brass, the silver contacts, and you have the copper coil. Okay. Some other ones. A little kind of rectangular one here. And there's the copper coil. And on this side, you have the brass and the silver contact. We have ones that are slightly longer, so there's a, a bigger one that's slightly longer. And this is what it looks like once we've taken that top plastic cover off. So your silver contacts and your brass are this side, your copper coil is this side, your armature is here. And that creates that closed circuit once the the current is run through the switch. Okay. With this one, 
they do come in various colours, so there's a almost exactly the same switch, it's a slightly different colour. But when you take the cover off them, they more or less look exactly the same. So there's no real difference to them. But what it is showing you is there is various sizes, various shapes, various colours that produce these little switches. Okay. Again, one thing I would say about these is sometimes they come uh, uninsulated. So essentially the coil of copper is revealed as soon as you take off the plastic cover. Other times they come insulated, so they have a little bit of insulation tape around them. Okay, and you have to actually take that off to then recover the copper. So again, minor differences, but there is some differences there. Ultimately, as I say, you're trying to recover the copper coil, the brass and the silver. And it may be that, you know, the copper coil you get is very small. But with everything, volume is the key. If you have a lot of these, then you'll get a nice little bit of copper out of the end of them. And they are abundant. They are on lots of different circuit boards. So you can find a lot of them and you can build them up really quickly. They can take quite a bit of time though in terms of taking them apart and recovering the various components. So you do need to put the time and effort in. And, you know, in terms of time spend, value for money in terms of that time spend. You know, a lot of people will watch this video and say, it's not worth my time, you're not making enough money, and you may be right. But as all hobby scrappists will tell you, it's not about the time spent. It's about actually just sitting and recovering and, you know, doing what you enjoy doing as a hobby. So that's what I do. I don't spend my, I was about to say I don't value my time, but I do, of course, value my time. Uh, but what I don't do is I don't uh, compare that time spend to the profit of what's involved in recovering some of these components. Okay. I do have another switch here. As you can see, it's a kind of more square switch. It's a bigger one as well. There is a little bit broken off top. So I'm just going to take this one apart as well to show you kind of how easy it is just to break off the plastic and get to the relay switch itself. What well, I would say guys, and I've probably said this in previous videos as well, I do do quite a lot of micro scrapping, but I do caveat that with saying that I'm not an electrician. I'm not an expert on electrical components. I just enjoy scrapping. Uh, I have some knowledge as we all know, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. Uh, but I share what knowledge I have. If there's anything incorrect in that knowledge, then I welcome all comments. So please do comment below. If you have much more knowledge about electrical switches, relay switches, that kind of thing, uh, then please do comment below and let me know. I know these are mechanical switches. Uh, and we do also get relay switches that are called static switches. This is not a static switch, this is a mechanical switch. Okay, so just breaking off the plastic. To reveal our switch, our copper, and our brass, and our silver. Okay. Once I break it off, the kind of edge of it comes off nice and easy, and it leaves the switch itself. Okay. Again, very similar to the other big switch where it has the spring, it has the armature, it has the silver contacts, and inside it has the copper coil. Now this one actually has a little screw. As you can see. Uh, and I think that's really just to uh, release the structural steel that's on the uh, exterior of the switch. But believe me, there is a nice copper coil in there. Okay, so I'm not going to bust all that up. I'll just end up making a mess and I'm sitting 
in the house doing this because it's quite late at night so uh, another problem for a hobbyist scrapper is you can never stop scrapping any opportunity to take something apart then I'll do that okay so what I'm not going to do guys is I'm not going to start taking it all apart and weigh it all up and all that kind of thing all I wanted to do here is show you the variation in the switches yeah so as I say you know, it's not like uh, something like a monolithic capacitor where you can identify that right away and say, oh, there's a monolithic capacitor, it looks a certain way and everyone looks the same. Uh, and I don't <laughs> actually, capacitors don't, a lot of, there's a lot of different types of capacitors, but in terms of a monolithic capacitor, they all more or less look the same. Uh, really switches inside, they all look very similar. But on the outside, as I've demonstrated there, you can be different colours, different sizes, different shapes. Uh, but inside, they all have the copper coil, they all have a, a silver contacts, and they all have a little bit of brass. Uh, and a little bit of steel. Yeah, so, the key thing is breaking them open and getting all those goodies out of it. Again, one thing I just wanted to share with you guys as well is that to identify these things so ones like these for instance yeah these kind of thin ones kind of rectangular shape you do get components on a board that look very similar to this but they're capacitors they're not really switches and the reason uh, well the, sorry not the reason but the way to identify the really switch versus the capacitor is to remove it from the board and check the underside of it as you can see the underside of this is plastic okay the capacitors will have this kind of waxy uh, material uh, and you'll see it's kind of a molded waxy material and you can't break them open as easy they're not as hollow inside once you break them open there's just a, a kind of silver parcel that the capacitor is formed from uh, obviously you break this open you find the relay switch that I've demonstrated already in this video so if you're taking them off the board you look underneath it and you see a kind of waxy molded material you know that's not a relay switch it's a capacitor okay so uh, yeah relay switches only that's what I'm looking for in terms of this the other ones aren't worth anything these things contain some nice little items okay so that's it guys, that's just a little run through of relay switches, as I say, you do need quite a bit of them, you know, to to get a fair bit of copper out of, if you get ones that size and there are bigger ones, then you don't need that many to get a nice little bit of copper, nice little bit of brass, some good silver contacts, you know, you can build them up fairly quickly. Uh, I've got a little kind of, I'm not sure if I can see these here, but. Got little, lots of little silver contacts. Okay, I just break them off with the brass. But you can see they are silver. Not all of them are fully 100% silver. Some of the times are silver plated and you find that out because some of them are actually magnetic and obviously silver is not magnetic. So it's just a silver plate rather than a full silver contact. But other ones are full silver. So, you know. I think with anything nowadays that there's always a money saving element to any components that are produced uh, and yeah everyone's trying to save a little bit of money nowadays you certainly see that much more nowadays in electric motors where the windings are far more uh, well more much more generally they're they are becoming aluminium windings rather than copper windings I wish sometimes they would just colour them aluminium, but they don't, they coat them in copper. So they look like copper windings, but actually when you stick a grinder on it or, you know, scratch it with uh, a file, you'll see that they're actually aluminium. So, as I say, there's, a, there's always a cost-saving element. Uh, copper is obviously the most efficient. Silver, gold contacts are obviously the most efficient. But if there's ways to save money, then these big companies will always find it. Okay? But 
they're always a good thing to scrap. Uh, as I say, it can take a little bit of time to get through a big load of them, so try not to build too many of them up or you'll spend a lot of time breaking them apart and trying to recover the copper and brass and silver. But again, if you do it like I do it, sitting watching TV, breaking some apart, pulling out the components, then it doesn't really become a task, it doesn't really become a job. It's just, you know, sitting doing something and occupying my hands and all the rest of it while I'm watching something that I enjoy. So hopefully guys, you have watched something that you enjoy and you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, then again, just listen, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button. Uh, I would even much more appreciate if you share it out with your community. If you have a scrapping community, if your friends like scrapping videos, then please do share it out. And obviously, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then you know we, we do a lot of scrapping videos, we do a lot of teardown videos. Uh, I try and give as much information out as I possibly can. Uh, and you know what, I give shout out to other scrappers as well out there that give a little bit more information on certain things that I do. So the scrapping community is a, a great one. We are all part of it and you know we all do it because we enjoy doing it and it's a hobby more than anything else. Some scrappers do it as a business, I do not. I work 9 to 5 every single day, uh, other than Saturday and Sunday obviously. Uh, but I have a full time job, I do this as a hobby, it's something I enjoy. Uh, and that's really the only reason I do it. But I like to share my experiences, I like to share my knowledge, and I like to try and save you guys a little bit of time if you're doing scrapping as well. A little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and hopefully I can show you what's inside certain things without you having to take that apart yourself, save you some time and effort. Uh, but for this one, guys, again, thank you very much for watching. Always appreciate any of you guys that stop by the channel, and uh, we'll see you next time on Scrap in Scotland. Goodbye for now.